Good evening, folks. It's Diamond with the Oppenheimer Ranch Project, Magnetic Reversal News, and Shinrin Yoku bringing you a grand solar minimum update Thursday, October 20th, 9 p.m. Mountain Time, 2022. Hundreds of record cold temperatures east of the Mississippi, but the big story, 32 inches? That's what she said. Wild forecast says big snow in Colorado over the upcoming days. Keep calm. It's boom time. Snow, wind, and rain enter the NorCal forecast. What will the Bay Area see? Well, they'll see some moisture as Florida and the Gulf Coast see record freezing temperatures. Let's take a look at the unofficial record colds in the East Coast over the last 24 hours. Hours of powers. Hundreds of records set east of the Mississippi for record colds all time. A few record warms to the, to the West, but paling in comparison to the chill. Now the first snow of the season falls in western PA as well as the southern Appalachians all the way down towards North Kakalaki. Take a look at the snow in West Virginia. We got some snow in Kentucky looking plucky. There's the snow in Indy. And you can see this is the 72-hour accumulation. There's the lake effect in Ohio, western PA, and New York State. Now let's check the forecast Major weather pattern change expected for Northwest and the West. A major weather pattern change is expected to start on Friday and continue through the weekend across the Northwest and West featuring inclement conditions and below normal temperatures. It'll also blow out some of that poor air quality in the Pacific Northwest as well. Now a strong, strong cold front will dig through the Northwest on Friday and carve through the West over the weekend with heavy mountain snow for the northern and central Rockies, pushing all the way down to New Mexico and Arizona, by the way. Gusty winds throughout the region. Now let's check out the GFS model and walk it through day by day. Here is your Friday. There's going to be some snow up in eastern and western Canada. The snow is going to begin, it looks like, in Alberta before it dips down into Washington State and Idaho and western Montana. This is all Saturday morning. As you can see, it continues to push further south into Oregon and Nevada and northern Utah, western Wyoming, and then all of Utah by Sunday afternoon, as well as all of the high country in Colorado. And take a look, New Mexico and Arizona are going to be picking up and may some of the ski resorts may be opening Monday, October 24th. And if we push the model forward, it gets quite impressive with the snow continuing, another event layering on the west, and then a big event for the plains, potentially in the first week of November. So stay tuned for more global warming goodness. Shut up, Al! Get in your hole! He's pissed. Look at the potential totals in the Sierras here. It's showing over four feet of snow by the first week of November. Absolutely mind-blowing. Now stay tuned to the end of the podcast where we're going to do an amazing comparison of Jupiter's 80 moons, and that will certainly be a boom. Let's take a look at the thermodynamics and what's driving this weather. Well, it's going to be cold temperatures, and let's just run this through till now. Where are we at here? Okay, so you can see how the temperatures are pretty, pretty moderate, but then the west, the freeze is in the blue, is going to be dipping deeper and more pervasive, pushing all the way down into Texas, the nexus of the Schmexus. We really lost the data on that one. Wow. You can see uh, 46 in North Texas there. And not only that, Texas is also on the map for picking up some snow, ho-ho, in North Texas, and that's going to be on Tuesday, October 25th. So that could be a record. It's anybody's guess. Eight earthquakes in Idaho in the last 30 days. Holy macaroni. Is it Yellowstone? Is it about to blow? There have been eight earthquakes in the last 30 days in Idaho with a magnitude 2.5 or higher. How high are you? All of them have been in Sawtooth or Salmon River Mountains in central Idaho. Idaho's Public Health Preparedness and Response Section Manager Dennis Kern says most of central Idaho's seismic activity consists of aftershocks. Following the magnitude 6.5 earthquake that shook the Stanley area March 31st of 2020. So it's not funny. It's not Yellowstone. 
it's Aftershocks. Seismic update. Biggest rocker. 6.7. 62 kilometers south-southwest of Boca Chica, Panama. That was a big one. There are no tsunami watches or warnings for this rumbler. Now, about four or five months ago, we warned that the plate boundary here from Guatemala to Panama would be experiencing some large seismic activity due to a new paper coming out showing that this plate here is actually rotating at a very high rate. We could be seeing some of the largest earthquake activity in Costa Rica, Nicaragua, and Guatemala, as well as Panama, over the next, the coming years. And well, sure enough, 6.7 in Boca Chica. Good news, no tsunami, though. Here we are over at Iceland to check out the seismic unrest, which is quieting down quite a bit, but is still modulating between the north, the Tiernes fracture zone, the Reykjanes Ridge, and Grimsvolten. So, heads up as research reveals magma activity beneath Mount Edgecombe. This baby is supposed to be extinct, but magma beneath the long dormant Mount Edgecombe volcano in southeast Alaska has been moving up through Earth's crust, according to research at the Alaska Volcano Observatory, rapidly produced using a new method. We're not going to discuss the method, but it's the fastest rate of volcanic deformation that we currently have in Alaska said the research paper's lead author, Roni Grapthenthen, a University of Alaska Fairbanks associate professor of geodesy. And that just sounds amazing. And while it's not uncommon for volcanoes to deform, the activity at Edgecombe is unusual because reactivation of dormant volcanic systems is rarely observed. Yet, we're observing it. An eruption is not imminent, but it is in the works. What do I mean by that? Well... The research team began its work as soon as a swarm of earthquakes was noticed at Mount Edgecombe on the 11th of April, 2022. Researchers analyzed the previous 7.5 years of ground deformation detected in satellite radar, and it was the most deformation anywhere on the continent. And what has happened here is that magma at Mount Edgecombe, computer modeling based on satellite imagery shows magma is rising to 6 miles from a depth of 12 miles. That's moving at quite a fast speed and has caused earthquakes and significant surface deformation. So we don't have to wait until the magma, we do have to wait until the magma gets somewhere near one kilometers to worry about an eruption, but it has rapidly moving towards the surface. Now, what do we know about Edgecombe? Almost nothing. We only know about the last four eruptions during the Holocene due to isotopic carbon-14. And the most recent eruption was 2360 BCE. And prior to that, it goes all the way back to the Younger Dryas catastrophe. And there is no information on the volcanic explosive index either. But based on the morphology of the volcano, which means the shape and what it looks like, very similar to Mount St. Helens, this volcano could and will potentially erupt anywhere between VEI 2 and VEI 5 or 6. As you can see in the background, this volcano's entire top has been blown off, probably in a VEI-5 or 6 eruption similar to St. Helens. While we just have a nice, neat caldera up here, which is indicative of VEI-2 or 3 eruption in the recent past. But the volcano is dormant, so there has been no recent eruptions, and the data is sparse. So what can we expect? Well, we can expect anything from VEI-2 to VEI-5. Worldwide Volcano News, there's really no other advisories or watches or interesting information to report on other than Edgecombe. As we come over to space weather news, and we can see the sun is still quiet and still relatively spotless at Solar Max. It's almost embarrassing, especially for all the high paid NASA scientists and astrophysicists over the last six months who have been saying that this is the most extreme and the strongest solar cycle we've ever seen. All of that was a complete lie. And total fear-mongering for reasons unknown. So solar cycle 25 is mimicking solar cycle 24, is 100% weaker than solar cycle 21, and 200% weaker, weaker than solar cycle 22. Who knew? Now you do.
Now Missouri knew of contamination in Springfield's groundwater for decades before anyone told millions of people they had been poisoned. This is a story that is being told time and time again and we're re revealing it here on the channel. Early in 2019, Ed... Galbraith faced a crowd of 200 unhappy Springfield, Missouri residents, and he wanted to make amends. Galbraith, then director of the Missouri Department of Natural Resources Environmental Quality Division, acknowledged that the state agency in charge of protecting the environment should have announced decades earlier that contaminated water had spread from an old industrial site near the Springfield Branson National Airport. Now, residents have recently found out that a harmful chemical known to cause cancer had been detected in the groundwater, while there's a huge spike in cancer in the region for decades. Go figure. Now, the contamination came from the site of the now-shuttered Litton Systems, a former, guess this, defense contractor that had employed thousands of people in Springfield to make circuit boards for the Navy. And it's all just disgusting. Litton used a toxic solvent called trichloroethylene, or TCE, to wash the circuit boards. And just like all major cities around the world that are completely polluted from trichloroethylene, this region is no different. The only difference is that they knew about it and they let the people drink the water. This is a crime against humanity. And I'm sick of it. Now, take a look at this. One-of-a-kind Thor's hammer unearthed in Sweden. An actual amulet. Pretty awesome. Loki's lies, Odin's staff, and Thor's hammer are well-known archetypes of North mythology. But now, archaeologists in Sweden have unearthed a real Viking Age hammer of Thor. And so, take a look. It's pretty awesome. All the links will be below of Thor's hammer. What a slammer. October 25th, 2022, partial solar eclipse. This is the second partial solar eclipse of 2022. It's visible from most of Europe, Northern Africa, the Middle East, and Western parts of Asia. Now, this animation shows what the eclipse approximately looks like near the maximum point and the curvature of the moon's path due to the Earth's rotation. But we're not going to show you that. We'll just show you the map. How about that? Open the, can we make this big? There it is. And you're going to see the area of partial eclipse. The best viewing is in the darkest orange. And the rest of us are in the dark. So it's a very limited viewing area and not even a total eclipse. But we wanted to bring it to your attention as a new study indicates the North Atlantic is close to a tipping point. No, it's not new, it's old. And SciTech Daily apparently is just rehashing old articles. But it's talking about the shutdown of the AMOC and other circulating systems in our oceans. In fact, the destabilization of the subpolar North Atlantic prior to the Little Ice Age. Now, in this case, it's just due to the buildup of fresh water in the form of glaciers and then subsequent runoff of that fresh water in the summers into the oceans. But in our case, it would be a catastrophic release of the Beaufort Gyre, which we've done videos about, so go take a look. Now, a size comparison of Jupiter's 80 moons reveals their true magnitude, and it's spectacular. This came out a few weeks ago, I think. Jupiter has 80 known moons, with more still being discovered by astronomers and amateur sky watchers alike, but that's second only to Saturn's 83 moons in our solar system. Now, the video we're about to watch does a cool size comparison of all of the moons of Jupiter, and it's quite epic. It starts out with a handful of the smallest moons, each just about a kilometer, but what you're going to glean from this is about 74 of the moons are all part of a catastrophe that happened and the breakup of some other object. And then comes Ganymede, Jupiter's largest moon, and the largest in the solar system. It's bigger than the planet Mercury and nearly half the diameter of Earth. 
So it's completely amazing. But more importantly, there are four Galilean moons. And those are the ones that are true moons. The rest is just debris. So there's the setup. And let's watch the video together. There's Manhattan. And here what we're going to see is some of the smaller moons. And these are the actual three-dimensional shapes of the objects. This is not made up. And the names. These are all less than a kilometer. And then you have the approximately two-kilometer moons, all, most of them named. And now we're going to look at the three-kilometer moons, which all are debris from a cosmic catastrophe in antiquity. We have four-kilometer moons and five-kilometer moons and six-kilometer moons and so on. And you can see what we're looking at here is simply the remnants of a debris field. And some of the bigger pieces are now falling into place. Themisto, nine kilometers. And some of the bigger objects from the cosmic catastrophe. Now, all of these pieces of space junk, Andrastea, Leda at just 21 kilometers, Anaki at 29 kilometers, and you can see that 35-kilometer piece. That moon is called Sinope. And then the 42.2-kilometer Lysithia. And the 43-kilometer Methis. And the 46-kilometer Carme. And the even larger piece of junk called Pasiphae at 57 kilometers. Is your mind blown? Now look at the scale of Earth compared to these pieces. Alara, 80 kilometers. And Thebe at 98.6 kilometers. These are all part of the catastrophe. Look how small, and let's just pause this, that smaller junk is down here. This is all part of the breakup of Amalathea. 167 kilometers. And then you get the true moons, which are almost the size of our planet. Europa, Io. Now Europa probably has life under that ice sheet, and Io is even more unique. And Callisto, looking very similar to our own moon. And then Ganymede. Check out Meatball Studios. And that's a boon to knowledge. Proper prior planning prevents piss poor performance. I hope you got something out of the video. I hope you were as fascinated as I was with that Jupiter moon boom. And the fact that cosmic catastrophe is not, well, unique. It's the norm in our solar system. Subscribe if you haven't. Become a Patreon and support the work we do. We love you. Be safe. And that's a boom to knowledge.